over the weekend at the Live Golf Tournament. There was one of their events held on Donald Trump's course, of course. A few MAGA folks came out to chant, let's go Brandon, as Trump and his group of folks stand there on a separate stage, about 100 <laughs> yards away from those adoring fans chanting, let's go Brandon, which must mean something like there's only a few of us here because um, let's check out that picture of the scene at that golf tournament where uh, people packed the house to check out what was going on at Trump's tournament. Over the weekend, so let's check out some of those numbers because Trump and his folks do like to talk about attendance, crowd sizes. And in fact, they even use it as a measure for presidential elections. Really weird how that works. So let's go into it. Event officials didn't notice, didn't announce their attendance, though most estimates suggested only a few thousand spectators. Tickets did sell for $75 per day, but could be had on the secondary market for $1 a piece. Uh, plus five bucks in fees from StubHub. So the, the secondary market, of course, places like StubHub, people reselling. Um, I heard, yeah, so down to a dollar when it came to those. And even people then were like, eh, I'll wait until it drops to 50 cents. Just keep me updated, StubHub. So anyway, uh, it, if you're wondering what the normal numbers are at a golf tournament, which I was as well, um, usually around 20,000 is what uh, has been estimated before. So of course, um, let's take a, a, a a couple looks at some of the pictures that were taken at this event. This very blue collar connected to the people's event with Tucker Carlson, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Donald Trump, of course, as you guys saw there, enjoying the chance. And Donald Trump just told the best joke ever, or Tucker Carlson's being Tucker Carlson. Let's expand it out further. Also, as you see, look from the right to the left, Kimberly Guilfoyle, Donald Trump Jr., some guy that's helping out. Then there's Trump again. See the guy in the red standing? <laughs> I thought that was Trump Jr. for a second. There's like a, a he's like a body double or something. I, I don't know. Anyway, uh, more on to the next because I want to get this full scene. Trump's apparently uh, telling secrets with Marjorie Taylor Greene and uh, barking out his bad breath all over the place. Okay, so they had fun. Is the bottom line is what happened. Um, but there's no way that that Tucker, Marjorie Taylor Greene, of course the Trumps would be there, would be at this and not really think what this could look like, how it could um, sound. Um, maybe their connection to the regular people that they say they represent maybe would be shaken by this. None of that matters. And a matter of fact, Marjorie Taylor Greene heard some chance of vice president. Vice president, MTG for vice president. She was asked about this by the Washington Examiner that uh, it's a right leaning publication. So they want to go ahead and indulge her. This is what was said there. Georgia Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene was greeted with cheers of MTG for VP during her appearance with former President Trump at the past weekend's live golf tournament at Trump National Golf Club in New Jersey. She says, I was amazed. <laughs> she was amazed. The conservative pro-Trump lawmaker said she was honored by the chairs and is open to being the former president's running mate in the likelihood that he runs again in 2024. So suddenly it was from chants from the audience of folks that are cheering, let's go Brandon to apparently MTG for VP. Suddenly she's in the vice presidential comments and running mate conversation. Does that make any sense? I, I mean, I don't see why it doesn't. Uh, once you get Actually, Sarah, yeah. I, I, once you get Sarah Palin up there, it's like any wing nut right winger is qualified to be vice president because it's not as if it's a real job anyway. Um, so <laughs> like it's it's you marginalized from the very start as soon as you get in there. So I don't see the big deal in this woman being um, Donald Trump's running mate. However, I just think. You know this live. I don't know if you've been following this live golf story where the PGA Tour, you know, this is a like risen up as a competitor, and they're like, oh, you guys are backed by the Saudi government and regime. These guys killed journalists. These guys did 9/11. You know, these guys don't let women have rights in their country, and it's just kind of hilarious. To hear to hear these complaints be levied by the goddamn PGA Tour. I mean, the elitists of the elite, like the most exclusionary, the most one of the most conservative bodies that you'll find in sports. So this idea that they're just against authoritarianism is quite hilarious. And then you know what what it means to me is just this is like kind of. 
the old versus the new. I think that PGA Tour crowd um, is representative of what old Republicanism, old Republican politics, literally country club Republicanism, the people that used to have all the power and the influence in the party. And I think this live golf stuff is representative of the new wave of Republicanism. It's, it is rowdier, it is less quaffed, it is <laughs> live golf, quite frankly. But sadly, it's still elitist with the folks that are the important folks. They're gonna be off on the side as you see in this metal stage. They'll chant and fist pump and say, yeah, cheer for us. But although the, the, the whole thing looks like oh, it's more rowdy, it's louder, it's the regular blue collar folks. The folks still running it are no different. There's no difference here as far as their, their elitism is the point that I wanna make here as far as what they think they're pulling over people's eyes to think, oh my God, it's the kind of golf term it's gonna feel like in a, a, a college football game. <laughs> yeah, of yeah, course. I mean, for you guys, it's, but we're gonna be over here chilling. This isn't some like, oh, okay, this is like some blue collar. This is the dive bar version of the PGA Tour. Like, that's ridiculous. Um, and more importantly, people need to remember that Jared Kushner did everything in his power to cozy up to uh, Mohammed bin Salman, the basically the freaking crowned ruler of Saudi Arabia. And so the idea that, you know, this guy would bring his tournament to a Trump golf course, i.e., this is kickbacks, man. <laughs> this is mm. this is what this is this is cold hard cash in Donald Trump's pocket from the Saudi regime um that's that's all this is if we get down to you know brass tacks